Hi there, my name is Mike and I am one of the Prof's senior education consultants. I also happen to be a tutor in mathematics, computer science and physics. And I mentioned that because one of the subjects um, in particular, mathematics, as well as statistics and business, is what I'm going to be talking about today in regards to LSE's BSc in mathematics, statistics and business. Um, I know this is a topic that we've already talked about before. It's definitely worth actually revisiting from a slightly different perspective. Um, as you might be aware, each of us as tutors have slightly different specialisms, and mine is maths. So I am very excited to mainly talk about, I think, the maths and statistical aspects of this course and what we really, really need there as a baseline foundation because it is so crucial. Um, it's very, really important to be aware that if you are going for this course, there is a 17% admissions rate, at least there was one for the 2024-2025 cycle. Um, but we have actually had a lot of success in getting applicants onto this degree. In fact, we have specifically had 81% of our applications for this course being successful, which I think is amazing. Really, really demonstrates the power that a tutor or a consultant can have in your journey into getting onto a course like this. So if you really, really like what you hear and see, please like and subscribe um, to our channel um, and um, feel free to send this to anybody who might also be interested. Um, but here are my top five tips on how to get onto this very prestigious course. So my first top tip as to how to get onto uh, a course like this at LSE is make sure that your academic achievements are outstanding across the board. Similar to what is really offered with a lot of Oxford and Cambridge courses, this goes all the way back to your like post or sorry, pre-16 educational grades here. So if you haven't already got like sevens in your GCSEs across the board, you're going to find it very, very difficult to be able to get onto this course. Um, when it comes to A-level grades, if you're taking those, you need an A star in mathematics, and they do expect you to take further maths as well with an A grade. Uh, that third A that they are looking for, it could be really in any other subject, but if you really want to pertain it to sort of degree, you might as well either have that in statistics or business studies would probably be the most relevant aspects of that course. But knowing how competitive uh, such a course like this is, it's kind of surprising that they don't have an admissions test uh, in relation to this. And actually, it's possible to go for an admissions test to be able to boost your application even further, which you probably will do if you're applying for other top universities. If you are looking at taking an admissions test like the STEP papers, for instance, you can mention that within your personal statement. And actually, on top of your high grades of the things, that's already one thing that's going to improve the state of your application overall. But that leads me into tip number two already. Um, and in the sense that you really, really need a standout personal statement. Um, and in order to create a standout personal statement for a course like this, you do need to demonstrate like a very, very strong mathematical aptitude, but more so a passion for the subject in relation to a real life application. It tends to be that the most common sort of crossover between mathematics, statistics, and business is down the finance route. If there was a time that you perhaps like already worked uh, a little bit at a firm um, to get experience of mathematics or financial mathematics within the real world or how calculus basically was involved in the minimization um, of a particular model that you were using, um, I'd lo we'd love to hear details of that if I was perhaps one of the admissions people uh, for LSE. It makes a really strong application. You are showing, not just telling, um, and you are actually demonstrating through your own sort of activeness that you have a passion for these subjects. Now, going on to tip number three, um, with any really, really competitive course like this, you want really, really strong supercurriculars. Um, examples of this really is that you're looking quite heavily perhaps into like data science. You might be doing like a, a very, very particular like project on Coursera or Udemy that expands your understanding of Python programming, but you're applying that to maybe a project of some sort. That's a definitely a super curriculum because it's something related to the subjects you're applying for that goes beyond what you have to learn in school. Or it could even be that you're doing an EPQ that somehow relates to mathematics, statistics, or business, or ideally a crossover of the three. 
that really uh, sort of pushes that further um, rather than the word further, further <laughs> your passions, a bit of an old fashioned word, uh, into the subjects themselves. Um, really, really important if you want to stand out for the crowd and you really want to communicate the message of, I don't just want to go to university sub these subjects, I want to go to this university because my passions particularly match what you have on offer. Um, you are showing that without telling it, which actually in the UCAS application, where you're applying for like five different applications at once at most, um, that is the best way to tackle these things. Um, you could also say that you've watched um, maybe like university lecturers in like video series from Harvard or MIT, uh, basically like talking about maybe game theory, for instance, in terms of how that has affected like business practices. Um, or you've read, just to go along with your super curricular activities, you might have read a book or two on these um, topics. And in terms of knowing where to look for books, um, I generally suggest as a first place to look is actually Oxford and Cambridge's reading lists are really, really good places. LC, um, I don't necessarily think offer anything um, like too much at the moment because I'm mainly sort of suggesting that you go and get sort of relevant work experiences. But if you really want to boost that a bit further, actually saying that you read a book on like say multilinear uh, regression and basically how that can be used maybe to sort of improve um, like I guess worth eth ethics or be able to minimize the amount of time that you have um, like different workers working at once um, in a Gantt chart that you created definitely fits in line with what you know LSE are looking for in students. And as a bit of a bonus tip, going back to what the university's ethos is in terms of what they're looking for with students is really, really important as well. Um, you should be able to find a web page if you were searching Google now, what are LSE's core values? There are five of them, um, or generally about five uh, with each different university, not too many. Um, if you use some of the language that they are using to describe the students that they are looking for, um, about yourself, if that makes sense, then that already sort of screams within your application, you are the perfect candidate to go onto this course. Another big tip I'm gonna to bring to the table, this is also very relevant to your personal statement, is just develop some commercial awareness. If you're going into a business degree, you need to show some evidence that you know what the state of industries, particularly the industry that you might want to enter. If you're looking into going to a career after your degree is done, is like now. So that might involve reading things like The Economist, The Financial Times, or Bloomberg, to uh, really actually getting up to date with like current world events. Um, I know, like for instance, there's a lot of things that are always happening with the stock market on a very regular basis. Um, there's a lot of big news at the moment with like politics in America changing quite radically. Maybe there's something interesting that you could sort of talk about in relation to Black the Black Scholes equation. Uh, in relation to that. So does the sort of the happenings of, or goings on of today affect sort of the efficiency of our mathematical models? Um, and is there anything that we need to do to be able to keep up with current times? Or is there particular, any particular way mathematics can be sort of incorporated into business practices? It's easier to see from other examples by understanding what industries are doing nowadays uh, to answer those kinds of questions. It's very difficult to be able to answer them yourself. So a very, very good first step at developing your commercial awareness is get well read up on what's happening now, watch the news regularly if you're not already, and just keep up to date with the world of business around the world. And my final tip actually for applying for this course at LSE is a little bit of an unusual one, but it's usually it's actually recommended down to what LSE are looking for in their candidates. And this is write an essay on something that you are particularly passionate about. Uh, I'm not saying this because I want you to submit an essay to LSC. I'm saying this because I want you to be able to mention in a personal statement that you wrote uh, an essay on something to do with economics, philosophy, or history, for instance, that really sort of uh, brings in the human element or reflects the human element of what this course that you're going for is going to be referring to. We've talked a lot about the maths and statistics, but the business element of that 
is bringing those sort of quantitative aptitudes in application with people. And actually understanding people requires other subjects to come into the mix, certainly requires a level of communication that is very, very well demonstrated in an essay. Um, if you had written an essay already, for instance, you gave it to your teacher, they give a really, really sort of good recommendation based on um, what you've already written, because during your A-levels or during your AS level, they will have to report sort of what your academic like progress is like. That will speak volumes in your application. Um, so, and it also fits very, very well with LSE's interdisciplinary approach in tackling sort of our understanding of business from both quantitative and qualitative perspectives. So we're now at the end of the video. Those are my tips um, as a mathematician uh, in terms of how you can best get onto LSE's BSc in math, statistics, or, or and rather, business. <laughs> I hope you really, really enjoyed this video. If you did, once again, if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe, share this with friends, that you know might also be interested in going to LSE as well, particularly for this course. If you're already there or if you have some other opinions on what you think makes a great application for a course like this, we'd love to hear about this in the comments. We are very, very welcome to having quite open discussions on these things. Um, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can if you have any questions. But if you do have any questions, probably easier to ask us a bit more directly via phone or via email. You can find details of this on the screen right now. Um, and if you want to be in touch with a education consultant that can help tailor your application to a course like this, then we are more than happy to get back to you, pairing you up with one of our many, many sort of academic and industry professionals who are best suited to be able to maximize the chances of success within your application. But until we hear from you, we wish you luck in your immediate future and um, we hope to hear from you soon. Until then, take care.